Okay, everybody. Oh, I'm gonna my seatbelt on. I was gonna yell at me. This is Mooney Dash Cam. Don't talk about my lip. I got punched in the lip sparring. Not a big deal. I fought through it. You know how it is. Okay, this is a pretty good one. You know it's gonna be a good video when it's about the mob killing a police officer for maybe one of the most petty reasons I've ever heard of. We're in Sheep's Head Bay, Brooklyn. Let's flip this around and get into it. Okay, we are going to the scene of the murder like we always do. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, at Moody Dashcam. I post there every single day. And please leave suggestions for future videos in the comments. I get a lot of video ideas from you guys. I very much appreciate it. Wow, did you hear that car going around me? For no good reason. All right, the address that we're going to is 2111 East 19th Street in Sheepshead Bay, like I mentioned before. So, this happened in 1997. Uh, the acting boss at the time, it's a little bit, it gets a little bit confusing the timeline on who, where everyone was in the Colombo family, but it was Joel, this is a last name that's going to be, uh, can be pronounced about 15 different ways, C-A-C-A-C-E, Kakachi, Kakasi, however you want to go about that. He was either the acting boss at the time or the consigliere, which is pretty much the guy who speaks to the boss of the family or he was the acting boss timeline gets a little hairy out there so his nickname was joe waverly how he got that nickname i'm not sure someone let me know in the comments so you guys probably know he calls tommy shots tommy gioli who then became the acting boss after he got put away after joe waverly got put away he's a captain at the time calls him and tells him that he wants to get this guy killed Tommy gets the info. It's not clear how much info Tommy actually gets. We'll talk about that later on. So Tommy takes one of his up-and-coming guys, an associate, not even a made guy yet, uh, Big Dino, Dino Calabro. He takes him on a ride through Sheepshead Bay, brings him to the house of the person that they want to kill, brings him through the neighborhood, shows him the car, and gives him the license plate number. And Dino was told it was a Mexican guy that was from a social club in Queens. So, of course, Dino's going to believe what he says. Now, if Tommy Schatz really knew that info and kept it back and gave him this info, I'm not sure exactly how it went. So, they stake out this guy for a while. They're having trouble getting him at the location. And then Joe Waverly calls up Tommy and is like, what's going on? I want this guy killed. So they get serious about it. And they decide on the night that they're going to do it. They're following him home from work. Their whole plan was to get him while he was getting out of his car, coming home from work to kill this guy. They're planning on doing it. They got everything in place. And he makes a yellow light and they get stuck at a red light. And that saved him that night. So now a week later, they actually are able to try and get this done. Now it's August 15th, 1997. Like I said, we're going to 2111 East 19th Street, Sheepshead Bay. That's where the guy's house was. I don't think that was the address of his apartment. That's the address where his car was parked that I could find. Like I said, a week later, this is the whole scenario. They have two gunmen, one guy driving a crash car the crash car is there to ram a police officer that's responding to ram a police uh, cruiser that responds to the incident so the guys, the gunman can get away. So Big Dino and his cousin, Little Dino Saracino, are in a stolen Chevy Caprice. They're the gunman. They're carrying, Big Dino's carrying a 44 Magnum. Little Dino is carrying a 45 caliber semi-automatic pistol. The crash car is driven by a guy named Joey Compatiello, nicknamed Joey Caves. Like I said, that's to ram any police cruisers that respond. And then they have what they call a clean car to make the final getaway after they ditch the stolen kill car that they actually commit the murder in. All right, let me make this turn up here. 
So they have police scanners, walkie talkies to go back and forth, gloves, baseball hats. They really planned this out. They were not trying to um, get caught, obviously. No one does a murder trying to get caught. Ah, some people do. I can't, I can't put that blanket statement on all murderers. And now, Big Dino has no problem doing this because he wants to get made. He wants to go move up in the family, and this is how you do it. You do what's asked upon you. So, this night, like I said, August 25th, Ralph Dolls, D-O-L-S, I'll put a picture of him up, NYPD police officer off-duty, gets out of his car after pulling up to his house after a night of work, sees two guys walking, like, intently at him, you know, he has no idea who these guys are, he goes, what's up? And kind of before he could even finish saying what's up to them, he gets blasted. Now, we're going to be at the um, crime scene very shortly, but the pictures that I have, it's a little bit unclear. So, the info that we're getting is from Big Dino because he flipped and became a rat and testified about this whole situation, which kind of ended up not getting anyone arrested. We'll get into that afterwards. But he testified to get himself out of like a 70 year jail sentence because he was a hitman. He shoots, they both fire at him. They hit him multiple times. He falls on the hood of the car. But you'll see they shoot, they shot a bunch of times through the driver's window. So I don't know if he was in the car when they shot him or if he was outside of the car standing behind the door. I'm not exactly sure how it went down, but he did fall on the hood. I'll show you all the, photo, all the photos, like I said and he stumbles into his house and dies. They take off, do the whole thing they have to do, the cops don't end up getting called, and they get away clean. Perfect hit in their mind. Now remember, they just think he's a, the, the info they have is that he's a Mexican guy that works at a Queens social club. They find out the next day in the newspaper that this guy's a cop. Now, in his testimony, Big Dino's testimony, we're pulling up right here. Oh, of course someone took my, took my good fire hydrant spot. I'll block half the road, you know I guys don't care about that. So yeah, that's a good test. A nice bigger car could pass through. Now I know everyone's good. No one's gonna honk at me. Look at this, everybody. I still got my fire hydrant spot. I don't miss. I don't miss. Okay, so like I said, he freaks out when he finds out that um, it was a cop. You don't kill cops. He even said in his testimony, he goes, uh, we don't typically kill police officers. That's just a rule in the mafia. We don't kill kids. We don't kill cops. So just about right here, I'm aiming at where this guy's car was. His bumper, I'm lining up with my phone right now to make double sure his bumper was lined up right with the edge of that building right there so pretty much right where this ford i think that's a ford edge is right where he was that's the shot from the crime scene photos we have another shot from down the block so this is the block That's Avenue U right there. Keep in mind, right where that four just about is. That's, I'm recreating all the crime scene photos for you. It's about another shot. Then you'll see this place that was Cozy Tavern. I don't know if you heard me. This place was Cozy Tavern at the time. You'll see it's all taped off in the photos that I have. Oh, and then we have one more 
crime scene photo to recreate. So he freaks out that he finds out it's a cop. He calls up, Dino calls up Tommy, Tommy Shots, and says, we have to meet. We have to talk about this. So Tommy Shots, he, he pulls up to Tommy's house. Here is another, oh, make sure there's no cars coming, I don't wanna get killed. Right there, that's another crime scene photo. Calls up Tommy Shots, pulls up to his house. Tommy puts his finger over his lips like shush. Don't talk because you never know who could be listening. And they walk in the woods by Tommy's house, which I'll put the um, link in my description of the video all about the woods by Tommy's house where he buried a bunch of people. Kind of crazy. What's up? How are you? What's up? What's up? I just saw you looking, so I figured I'd say hi. There was, a, there was a guy that was killed here once. This guy? There was a guy that was killed here in 1997. Right where this uh, Ford is parked. Awesome. Yeah, he got out of his car and he was a cop. And the mob killed him. Crazy. Always got always to interact with the public. Did I say say hi to the truck? I better have. Can't leave that out. Let's go to this side of the street. Earlier while I was parked here, it looked like there was a little bit of a mafia meeting going on. I'll post the picture. I have a little bit of video of them talking. It's a very funny guy's in a full sweatsuit. Talking to an older guy. Like I said, they stroll through the woods by Tommy's house and they talk about it. And Dino actually asks if they can kill Joe Waverly because he ordered a hit on a cop. And Tommy goes, oh, I'll see. And then nothing ever comes of it. Because I really believe that Tommy knew that he was a cop from the beginning and still sent them on the hit. That's just my uh, guess. So, the reason why Ralph was killed, like I said, the most petty reason that anyone's ever been killed in my book is because his wife, Ralph Dahl's wife, was Joe Waverly's ex-wife. And the girl's name was Kim Kanoa. She was actually Willie Boy's uh, niece. Willie Boy, I have a whole video on him, I'll put it in the description also, was a close friend of John Gotti, who John Gotti ended up killing. So she was married to Ralph Dahls and had a kid with him. And Joe felt disrespected and embarrassed that she married a cop after him. So he orders his death. Now, right after the whole situation, she didn't testify against Joe. She lawyered up right away, probably knowing a little bit more about the situation than um, she wanted to share with detectives. Detective actually gave her the nickname Black Widow. Let's get back in the truck and we'll get more into that. The fact that Joe Waverly ended up getting acquitted of this crime because he had obviously he had very good lawyers the lawyers claimed that um big dino was a liar trying to get his sentence lightened which he was trying to get his sentence lightened but um he got acquitted of this and ordered it and it's kind of known that he ordered it so this woman kim kana was always involved with uh, mob husbands her previous husband before Joe Waverly was killed by Joe Waverly in this same neighborhood 10 years earlier the guy's name was Enrico Cardini he didn't only kill Enrico Cardini but he also killed his brother Vincent 
that's why detectives called her the Black Widow because all her husbands ended up dying, being killed. So what came of all this was Joey Caves got 12 years. He was just the, um, the crash car driver. Tommy Schatz and Little Dino did not get charged with murder. They got charged with conspiracy and racketeering, which they were both very happy about. This is like pretty new news, like uh, May 2nd. I'm filming this on May 4th right now, I believe. So Tommy has is expected to probably do about 20 years, and little Dino is expected to do about 100. So I don't know why he's so happy about not getting um, convicted on that. It doesn't seem like it makes much of a difference for him. So let me know what you guys think. Do you think Tommy Schatz knew that the guy was a cop when he sent Big Dino to kill him? Or do you think that he, that Joe Waverly actually told him that he was just a Mexican guy from a social club and that's the story he passed along? Because I, I feel like he actually knew the guy was a cop and sent Big Dino to kill him anyway. I don't know. He's done crazy, you know, Tommy Schatz, the guy who ordered the kill, like right after this, um, 1999, he had Wild Bill Cotolo killed, which is in the description, because uh, those are the woods that he buried Wild Bill in, that he had to talk with Big Dino in. All right, I think that's everything I have to tell you about this ridiculous, petty incident of killing a cop. I could go on and on about it, but I'll see you guys in the next one.